Hey, what's going on folks? This is Sir Big Bank with a quick level up moment for you to think on. We've all heard the saying that if at first you don't succeed, that we must roll up our sleeves and try, try, and try yet again. You know, with that presence of mind, failures and losses, losses are supposed to be just stepping stones and learning paths on our way to success. However, when losses and failures start stacking up, it can become a thick barrier in the way of our achievement. I'm a young old man born in the early 80s. I was raised on the Ricky Bobby philosophy that if you were not first, you were last. If I didn't succeed, it was because I must have had a little bit more in the tank that I could have and should have given. Because of that, I grew up and took failure and turned it into fuel to put that much more in my attempts to make sure I succeeded. But that was a different era. That was the old school. We have since entered an era where participating is the award in itself. Often the success does not come from being the best or first, but from merely being involved in the process. I think 10 years ago I would have been one of those people crying foul about participation trophies being treated as successes. However, I think, where, I think about where my career has taken me in IT project management support in the public sector. In the public sector, government agencies and organizations are not so focused on generating profits as they are in delivering effective services. One of, the new, one of the newer schools of thoughts, thought in IT project management is centered around agile thinking. Agile reinforces you to fail fast and fail often as you attempt to roll out new projects. Where people go wrong in their attempts to embrace agile thinking is when they race from objective to objective as quickly as possible while expecting to fail and to encounter obstacles, but while still keeping their foot on the gas to speed forward. Unfortunately, the devil in the detail here is that they deprive themselves of the opportunity to fully realize the true purpose for failing fast and often to begin with. That purpose for being open to failure in our undertakings is so that we can iteratively, during our processes towards our goals, take what we're seeing and learning about what is not going well or failing and quickly tweaking, resetting, and even redoing those processes to achieve the success that we desire. You know, that all gives birth to the, the full body of the definition of what creativity is. You know, the going beyond normal ideas, rules, patterns, and relationships to create meaningful new ideas. So let me let me pull this back in here. You know, we have all heard of how Thomas Edison felt felt nine thousand times in his attempt to invent the light bulb before he was successful. And here, here's a good one. There's also a little company that you may have heard of named Nintendo. Nintendo started a trading card started as a trading card company. By the 1960s, Nintendo was seeing a mountain of business loss losses in the trading card space. But they kept thinking up other ideas and decided to try electronic tro toys, which led to video games, consoles, and Super Mario. Well, we know how that turned out for them. But guess what? During the years of 2012 to 2014, Nintendo tried and failed at its launch of the Wii U putting the company on a path to financial headaches yet again. Fortunately, since then, Nintendo has bounced back with the success of the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is now one of the fastest selling consoles in history. So the message here is, failure is not the end. It is just the beginning for those who can learn, adapt, and you know, embrace change. You see, when you don't achieve the results you have planned for, you must immediately and creatively tweak, reset, and redo to be better to achieve the success you, success you desire. This is our Big Bank, and I thank you for checking this out. Catch you next time. The Cabal do not weave magic, unless you count their grasp of technology as sorcery.